welcome to the third session of this week of marketing management part 1. We are discussing segmentation, targeting and positioning. We have discussed different approaches to segmentation. We have discussed what characterizes a valid segment in terms of measurability, uh, growth potential, current size and so on. We have discussed that uh, positioning is in the minds of the consumers and therefore, what you do must be tested against what has happened in the marketplace in the mind of the consumer with respect to your competitors, how they perceive your value propositions with respect to your competitors value propositions to what extent you have been able to achieve the distinctiveness and so on. Uh, today, I want to take up uh, a particular uh, set of issues relating to segmentation and targeting in the B 2 B market. As you will see earlier, uh, when we were discussing about different types of buying, uh, consumer buying processes versus business buying processes. Some of these points have already been raised, but today let us try to consolidate segmentation aspects and targeting aspects for B 2 B markets uh, and in and put them in comparison to the same activities in the B 2 C markets. So, as we know business markets or B 2 B operators are people like Ingersoll Rand or Larson and Tubro who primarily in all their businesses uh, focus on the requirements of other businesses. They do not reach uh, the end consumer in terms of the marketing process, even though customers come in contact or customers get the benefits of the offerings of these companies uh, through various interfaces. But the buyer for these companies are other businesses. So, if you take a company like Larson and Tubro, you can immediately see that they primarily address different types of uh, segments within the overall ambit of business market. They address uh, commercial markets uh, that uh, for example, uh, goes for pump control or goes for uh, electrical appliances, uh, goes for uh, different types of products used in uh, construction or earth moving and so on. They serve governments as well as public private institutes. So, when it comes to segmentation, these sort of companies can do it by demographic characteristics. In this case, demography will be defined in terms of various kinds of balance sheet items like uh, size of sales uh, revenue, um, number of employees, uh, location, geography or uh, the grouping of the target customer within an overall industry classification, uh, say like petrochemical industry or pharmaceutical industry or uh, power industry and so on. 
So, segmentation in terms of uh, size, number of employees, etcetera, demography related segmentation in terms of uh, nature of customers activities. Uh, segmentation can be based on uh, homogeneous groups of customers. For example, all pharmaceutical companies or all power industries and we can use the different kinds of classification systems normally uh, recommended by the government agencies. So, there are uh, you know Indian standard publication uh, segmentation according to government notification of different types of uh, industries also obeying the sets of customs and excise rules, which therefore, will distinguish say the leather industry from petrochemical industry. So, this is uh, a kind of segmentation approach uh, based on the nature of activities, the size and structure of your target customers. Segmentation can also be done by uh, end use application. Like for example, you can segment your market as a conveyor belt. So, conveyor belts may be used in automotive industries, conveyor belts may be used in uh, some consumer uh, product industries at various places, but you can define your market as conveyor belt related. So, this is kind of one segmentation which we say by end use application or segmentation can be uh, also in terms of uh, purchase characteristics. To illustrate for example, the purchase process or characteristics of printers will be similar to the purchase process of say electrical motor. These are equipment, these are capital assets or goods, these are infrequently purchased often during the setup of an industry or for replacement. On the other hand, the printer paper will be something which will be almost like a consumable and it will be required for regular operations. So, taking this kind of differences, one way of segmenting business arena for B 2 B will be to say that we have entering goods, entering goods can be raw materials or components or subsystems. Entering goods are those which participate in the production process of your customer or you can have facilitating goods like tables, chairs, air conditioners. These do not directly participate in the value flow of your production process they do not get ingrained in the ultimate production from your factory, but these are required for proper working conditions or increasing the efficiency or effectiveness of your employees. And then of course, we have capital goods as we discussed motors, transformers or uh, machines, uh, CNC machine tools and so on. So, these are three types and sometimes you can also define your uh, market segment with respect to this kind of distinctive purchase processes for MROs or for capital goods or for entering goods and so on. One thing that 
is at the base of this type of segmentation. This we have discussed earlier is this concept of buying center or multiple participants in the buying process as opposed to an individual decision maker. So, what happens is that when it comes to uh, uh, as we see here when it comes to capital goods there will be many people involved in the buying process. The buying center will be operative in its truest sense. Whereas, in certain types of regular consumption items what we call uh, maintenance or operations or replenishing items like printer paper may be based on some initial screening uh, and uh, rate contracts negotiated. Uh, one single person, one purchase clerk, store superintendent may be making all the decisions. So, this group decision making or the business center uh, activity uh, is uh, usual in B 2 B, but there are also individual decision making uh, instances and accordingly you may segment your market, because your distribution strategy, your sales contact strategy, your promotion strategy will differ. So, for a high value capital goods advertising is of not much use, but direct sales is of high importance. On the other hand for something like um, office supplies, advertising may play a role, postal campaigns type of direct markets may play a role, proper catalogs or web based purchase facilities may play a role and so on. So, you see therefore, uh, if you do a segmentation based on the buying process, it will give you guidance with respect to organizing your different activities for marketing as well as for the supporting activities. The segmentation can also uh, tell us about the types of buyer seller relationships. Segmentation in B 2 B should also look at uh, the nature of the demand, generally in B 2 B demand is always derived demand. I mean if you are uh, in the business of serving the automotive segment, then the demand for automobiles will determine the production level, will determine the expansion objectives of your customer and your marketing activities will be guided by those requirements or growth patterns of your customer. So, segmentation therefore, is uh, based on the type of industry served is very important for uh, frequently purchased uh, entering goods. Whereas, in case of capital goods say like electric motor or printers, there may be multiple types of uh, businesses forming your total customer universe. So, certain aspect of your marketing strategy will be determined by what kind of business you are in, whether you are in a entering goods type of business or you are in a capital goods type of business. And then that universe of course, will also have to be looked at 
in terms of individual uh, industries. So, in a steel plant the annual purchase of motors even after the initial setup phase, the annual purchase of motors will be pretty high. In a uh, textile industry, high speed spinning industry, the annual purchase of motors as replacement against wear and tear etcetera will be pretty high compared to that of say uh, a pharmaceutical industry, which is a light engineering sort of industry. So, the nature of the demand, the volatility of the demand, the elasticity of the demand uh, will determine your marketing strategy, will determine your segmentation and positioning. Because if you are if you are in the inelastic demand type of situation, where change of price uh, will not change the demand drastically, because I mean uh, the requirement for say uh, printer paper will be in consonance with the activities of your target customer. So, if you change the price by 10 percent, obviously your demand from the market will not go up. There will be maybe some people will buy and store, but there will not be very significant impact. So, so, the, so as you can see here your marketing activity and your positioning or will depend on the type of uh, product. And when we say the type of product, it means looking at the all the patterns of demand, the volatility, the elasticity and so on. So, in short, what this particular slide says is that one kind of segmentation or positioning in B 2 B market is based on demand pattern. Then this uh, concept of make buy or lease. So, in some cases this is not a uh, deliberation. In an automobile company in all probability there will be certain critical parts like the engine or like the uh, transmission system that will be made by that company or will be sourced from the uh, parent company of that company. So, for example, the engine uh, will be made in Maruti's own plant, uh, but or, or will be sourced from Suzuki or the transmission system, but uh, the body parts, the window regulator, the steering system will be bought. Whereas, when a new plant is being set up by Maruti, the earth moving machinery may be taken on lease or may be taken on rent or may be taken on use and return basis. So, these will influence the marketing strategies of people who are serving Maruti for supplying components, for supplying uh, facilitating goods or uh, production machines. And the marketing strategy targeting positioning issues will therefore, depend on the ultimate target segments make buy lease decisions. And 
the buying process we have discussed this just now we were talking the complexities change from entering goods to capital goods the number of people involved changes will change from so that means the size of the buying center or the number of members belonging to the buying center will change as we go up from frequently bought relatively lower value high volume entering goods as opposed to infrequently purchased high value critical choice complex decision based capital goods purchases. So, obviously, the positioning must be based on efficiency of delivery chain, must be based on reliability and quality of each batch of supply on a continuing basis, must be based on information system coupling between the supplier and the buyer in case of entering goods in a certain way that will suit the end customers objectives. So, the entering goods marketers to Tata Motors will be following almost similar strategies, because the dominant frame will be entering goods purchase process of Tata Motors, whether they use rate contracts, how many, what is the frequency of negotiation of the rate contract, what is the frequency of delivery uh, required for your products in the chain. So, the steering system or the brakes or the window regulators will be required for every vehicle in multiple numbers and therefore, the delivery sequence to be just in time must be synchronized with the production rate and pattern of Tata Motors. So, the whole market positioning here for a vendor will have to depend on, will have to be based on reliability, quality, dependability uh, and such issues besides of course, competitive price uh, and uh, uh, brand image and so on. But in case of say a high value uh, multi axis uh, robotic machine for painting or for welding, the positioning in many cases will not only be dependent on previous experience of Tata Motors or uh, reference from other similar large automotive companies, but may also depend on that robotic machine suppliers image with respect to technical competence, sophistication of their R and D, the fame of certain type of machine and control and so on. So, as you can see that therefore, the positioning targeting is highly dom dominated by the customer served 
in case of the entering goods, whereas when it comes to the capital goods, the canvas is much bigger, the segmentation will be usually multi segment, multiple types of industries served by different types of customized machines coming from the same basic building block of robots and uh, construction or production machines. And will also depend on main various other uh, attributes like technology competence, R and D, um, reputation with respect to support and so on. So, I hope you get this thing that business market positioning and targeting, segmentation of business markets are somewhat similar, but vastly different from the methods that we use in the B 2 C market. So, here the emphasis is much more on the nature of the buyer, the activity of the buyer and where in the value flow you fit in. The nature of the buyer, the buying process of the buyer will be also very important for segmentation targeting in the consumer market B 2 C market, but it will be important in the B 2 B market from different uh, dimensions, not exactly same as what determines the B 2 C segmentation. So, Classifying business buying situations in a way can help us uh, to consolidate these different aspects of segmentation, targeting and positioning. We have actually created these three classes that sort of encompass all types of B 2 B market, uh, B 2 B buying situation. So, one which we call straight rebuy, this is the entering goods related components, consumables, subsystems that we buy uh, without negotiation each stage based on rate contracts, based on maybe uh, vendor evaluation, based on vendor rating. Um, so, here as I was discussing a little while back, the segmentation targeting positioning rules immediately emerge in terms of reliability, in terms of dependability, in terms of quality and so on. So, here customer is reordering on a regular basis to fit in his production flow to rise and fall with respect to a just in time approach and key words for segmentation targeting positioning will be those reliability quality etcetera which I discussed. The next uh, buying process we call modified rebuy. Here it is regularly purchased like say electrical uh, products like maybe circuit breakers or starters or contactors or relays and so on uh, or uh, uh, say tools used in machine tools, 
cutting appliances, welding uh, setups. So, these are not purchased daily, the requirement may not be exactly in consonance with the production volume of the target customer, but here again because there is customer does not involve too many steps may not go for open tendering. The issues of reputation related reliability quality etcetera uh, attributes remain very strong, because the customer wants to take the right decision without spending too much time on it. And so, the track record becomes very important and your targeting and positioning must enhance that track record, must augment, must build that image related to track record in customers mind. But new capital expenditure, new buy as we call it that is first time or unique purchase situation usually involve lot of efforts, information seeking, comparing, analyzing, getting references, seeing demonstration testing trial runs. So, in these cases there are opportunities may be for the first time competitor entering into the fray with some latest cutting edge technology. So, the targeting positioning here will change with respect to the nature of the industry. In the information and communication technology industry, when they approach buyers like say automotive or petrochemical, because of the volatility of, volatility of the ICT industry, every time an established competitor may have to face a new upcoming competitor and face serious threat. So, if you are in the mark in the ICT market, to successfully target your objective your, your, your customers say in the petrochemical industry or in the power industry or in the automotive industry or in the chemical industry, you will have to blend your track record with your latest R and D with the relevancy and recentness of your technology. And you may use the same sort of packaging for positioning for a power industry capex buying situation or a cement industry capex buying situation. So, as you can see here that in the straight rebuy situation, you will have to tailor it, customize it for one single targeted buyer. In a way this is like comparable to a very precise segmentation in B 2 C market. Whereas, in case of the capex buying, you are managing STP activities, which are precise as well as in some ways like the multi segment instances in B 2 C. 
So, this gives us some basic approaches to STP in B 2 B. Of course, always we have to remember that in B 2 B there is a buying center, there are multiple player, there are what we call gatekeepers like the purchase department, there are influencers like the consultant and your segmentation targeting positioning may sometimes change from the usual pattern depending on the relative strength of the people playing different roles in the buying center. This you will have to judge case to case. So, in a particular buying center where the influencer is very strong, the consultant's recommendation or the plant contractor's recommendation is very important. Your marketing activities and segmentation positioning even for straight or modified rebuy situation can almost become like a um, new buy situation. There can be lot of information giving and knowledge sharing and high involvement marketing. So, in short the caveat for the pattern that we discussed with respect to this buying situation will also be these buying center roles. And there are of course, certain international B 2 B buying situation, where the customs, cultural issues, um, local rules, regulations etcetera will also influence the targeting and positioning. So, we have discussed therefore, segmentation targeting and positioning from different perspectives in different market situations over the last uh, three sessions. In the next session, we will also look at the nature of marketing management and changes that are required to be understood in terms of the evolving product or technology life cycle. So, we take that up tomorrow. Thank you.